Today I learned. On the morning of May 24, 1941, the battlecruiser HMS Hood engaged with the German battleship Bismarck and her consort, the heavy cruiser Prinz Eugen. The British opened fire at 5.52, with Hood engaging Prinz Eugen. The Germans returned fire at 5.55, concentrating their fire on Hood. The Prinz Eugen was the first to score a hit, hitting the Hood's boat deck and starting a large fire. Vice Admiral Lancelot Ernest Holland ordered a turn to port, to bring the combined firepower of Hood and her escort, Prince of Wales, to bear on the German ships. Just before 6 o'clock, while Hood was turning, she was hit again by a salvo from the Bismarck. A huge jet of flame burst from the ship, followed by a devastating explosion that destroyed the aft part of the steel behemoth. This explosion broke the ship's back, forcing her bow nearly vertical in the water. The Hood sank in just three minutes. Of the 1,418 men aboard, only three survived. The British Navy would hunt the Bismarck over the next few days, eventually sinking it on May 27. Did you know? On the infamous shores of Omaha Beach, amidst the chaos of D-Day, the USS Texas did something extraordinary. With Allied forces pinned down by strong German resistance, the mighty battleship took a daring gamble, it intentionally flooded one of its compartments. But why such drastic action? To provide crucial artillery support. With the elevation of its dated guns unable to effectively reach inland targets, the Texas opted for an ingenious solution, flooding the starboard torpedo blister. This caused the ship to list at a two-degree angle, granting the guns the elevation needed to bombard German positions further inland. The Texas's sacrifice didn't end there. After receiving word that a Ranger battalion at Point du Hoc was cut off from the invasion force with low ammunition and mounting casualties, the Texas filled two LCVPs with provisions and ammunition for the Rangers and carried back the wounded. The Texas's action symbolizes the unyielding spirit of the Allied forces. Faced with adversity, they didn't succumb. They adapted, improvised, and used every ounce of their ingenuity to turn the tide of battle. Did you know? December 7, 1941. Amidst the carnage of Pearl Harbor, three young sailors clung to life in an airtight pump room of the USS West Virginia, now resting on the seafloor. For 16 agonizing days, they clung to survival, their desperate pleas muffled by the weight of water and steel. As rescue efforts began, faint tapping reached the ears of Marines guarding the wreck, growing fainter each day. Pretty soon nobody wanted to do guard duty, one Marine recalled, especially at night when it was quiet. The taps ceased on Christmas Eve, leaving only the silence of their fate. Months later, when the West Virginia was raised, a nightmarish discovery was made in the pump room. Three bodies huddled together, a calendar marking 16 days crossed off in red pencil. A silent testament to their fight for survival in the abyss. Today, the memory of Clifford Olds, Ronald Endicott, and Lewis Buddy Coston lives on. Their names are etched on the Pearl Harbor Memorial, a reminder of the lives lost that fateful day. Did you know? The infamous attack on Pearl Harbor left the USS Arizona a smoldering wreck, a somber symbol of a nation shattered. But amidst the tragedy, a story of resilience, deep within Arizona's mangled remains lay the guns of her number two turret. But their story wasn't over. Salvaged from the wreck, these guns, bent and battered, refused to rest. They were straightened, relined, and given a new life aboard the battleship USS Nevada. These reborn guns roared back to life in the fall of 1944 against the very enemy who'd sunk their former home. On the battlefields of Iwo Jima and Okinawa, the Arizona spirit lived on, spitting fire at the Japanese forces. It's a reminder that even in the face of devastation, there's an ability to rebuild, repurpose, and find strength in the very scars of hardship. For the crew of the Nevada, firing those Arizona guns was an opportunity to channel their anger into a righteous fury. Did you know? April 11, 1945. Off the coast of Okinawa. The roar of battle echoed across the Pacific as a lone Japanese kamikaze plane plunged toward the mighty USS Missouri. The impact was deafening, and flames engulfed the battleship's deck. In the aftermath, a chilling sight, the pilot's body, amidst the wreckage. Fury gripped the American crew. This fallen enemy represented the horrors they had endured. But Captain William Callahan made a decision that defied the heat of the moment. He ordered a burial at sea, not with indifference but with respect. He told his crew that after death, he was a human being deserving of dignity. His plea resonated with a handful of sailors who hand-stitched a makeshift Japanese flag to symbolize respect for a life lost. The ceremony was simple, the flag draped the pilot as he was lowered into the ocean as a bugler played taps. In that moment, the USS Missouri, a symbol of American might, became a vessel of empathy. Did you know? Few vessels resonate with the power and legacy of the battleship. Their monstrous guns pummeled enemy ships from incredible distances. They were the ultimate enforcers, hulking behemoths bristling with firepower, the ironclad kings of the high seas. But even titans eventually cede their reign. The USS Missouri wasn't just any battleship, 
she was a witness to history. Completed in 1944, she bore the scars of World War II, participating in pivotal battles like Iwo Jima and Okinawa. But her most iconic moment arrived on September 2, 1945, when her deck became the stage for the surrender of the Japanese Empire, effectively ending World War II. The USS Missouri and its sister Iowa-class battleships played a crucial role in the Pacific theater. Still, the war's closing months witnessed the rise of aircraft carriers as the dominant naval force. Despite the Missouri's historic role as the site of Japan's surrender in 1945, the era of the battleship was fading. By the 1950s, the USS Missouri and its sisters were decommissioned. Today, she rests as a museum ship in Pearl Harbor. Did you know?